Battlefield 2042 Exodus, a short film, is nearly here. And until then, we are going to be taking a journey on the story of the Notepads through the eyes of the reporter Kayvon Bashir. If you'd like to catch part two, I've got a link in the description and an annotation on screen. This is part three, Coyote Run. The date is February 19th, 2041 in Branny Island, Singapore. Even for those with nothing to lose, this was crazy. After months of moving everything from processors to pork bellies, the latest cargo, 65 Australian refugees, add a coyote to this task force resume. I held my breath as our next stop appeared through the mist. It was pin drop silence as our ship passed through the seawall, protecting Branny Island, Singapore's state-of-the-art automated seaport. Rao's wizardry may have gotten us convincing credentials for the scanners, but I knew if the famously brutal Singaporean Port Authority SPA got a whiff of this boat, it would get real loud real fast. By the mid-30s, rising sea levels had decimated a third of all commercial ports around the world. In a deft response, Singapore built a revolutionary sea wall to defend its oil-driven cargo distribution system, making Branny Island the central hub of global trade. The notepad's problem is piss PR, specialist Casper Vandel grumbles. Singapore used to tolerate us, but it got messy when every terrorist and his mother started calling themselves notepads for some tea and sympathy. America was already afraid of losing control of this place, so they wielded all the bad press to force Singapore into shutting all notepad fleas out. Vandel said, by some miracle, we dock undetected. Casper deploys an OVP recon drone to make sure we're clear as Rao ushers the refugees into a beat up shipping container that's been outfitted with cots, a latrine and supplies to last them 10 days. Makes you wonder what's in any of these containers. The last refugee isn't able to slip into the hiding spot before sirens erupt. Rangers, robotic quadrupeds with guns for brains, seemingly fall out of the sky rushing towards our boat. Casper quickly snipes our mechanical assailants as the copper field lurches out of the dock. Amazingly, Rao hacks into the automated distribution system on the island, dropping containers wherever he can to block our escape. It's not enough. The SPA pursues us into open waters, gunfires, screams, more gunfire, silence. Then I hear an ear-splitting cannon shot. My heart stops as I wait for impact until I realize where the blast originated. A constellation of vessels on the horizon. A no-pat fleet. Fishing trawlers, container ships, tugboats, and more. There's no telling how many are armed and the SPA has no interest in finding out. They turn tail. It seems among the 1.2 billion displaced out in the world, this task force has at least a few friends. Tomorrow, we will be getting part four of the story, so do click subscribe and turn the bell on to be notified. And today, in part three, we got to learn a little bit more about Casper. Do let me know what you all think of this story in the comments down below, and I'll see you all tomorrow.